comes to clay, you can manipulate it into any form, but there are some stipulations. There's certain ways that things will work, certain ways that things won't work. Uh, so today we're going to look at the material itself a little bit so you understand how it works. Uh, and then, you know, as time goes on, I'll expose you guys to project ideas based on what you're interested in and help you find the best way to create those ideas out of clay. So first of all, who can tell me what is clay? Mud. Mud, right? Yeah. Mud comes out of the ground, comes out of the earth. Yep. It is, in essence, old dirt. You can't go out, dig clay up out of the ground, and make stuff out of it. They've been doing it for thousands of years. They take clay from the earth, they heat it so that it's so that it hardens and becomes stronger. Um, and pottery is discovered even today from hundreds of years ago still intact. It's a very strong material, very long lasting. Um, but we, we can go out and dig out dirt, uh, clay from the ground, but you're often going to get impurities in it. You get sticks and twigs and roots and rocks and things in there that you don't want, and that will cause trouble. Okay? So we actually buy clay from a factory, and when they, when they uh, mix the clay, they use a couple of uh, real key ingredients. The first one is silicon. Anybody ever hear silicon? Silicone. 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 Silica. Okay, it's all very similar uh, chemically compound. Uh, silicon is the main ingredient um, in glass, in concrete, and in clay. It's sand. Anybody knows what happens when you heat up sand? Glass. It turns to glass, right? So silica is the, the ingredient in clay that gives it the strength when heated. Uh, some other things that have to be found in clay in order for it to work out for us. One is alumina, um, which again is found in concrete and glass. Um, it gives it its, its flexibility, also helps add strength when it's fired. And you're going to find water in clay. That's going to keep it soft, pliable, so that you can manipulate it into different forms. Once that water is gone, it no longer has uh, the ability to be manipulated. It's dry and it starts to take form and you can no longer move it. Okay. So that's the, the chemical compounds of clay. You're going to find clay in a couple of different stages. All right, I'm going to pass this tray around so you guys can actually feel it. What you're going to find here in the first row is called greenware, or green. That's that soft clay. When you take it out of the, the plastic bag or the bucket, it's going to be soft, it's going to be pliable. Uh, you can pretty much do anything with it at that stage. Go ahead and pass that around. The next stage is considered leather hard. That's when the clay sits out, it starts to dry, you can still bend it, you can still add more clay to it. It's not completely dried out because there's still water trapped inside the clay. So as long as you keep your clay wrapped up, you're still going to be able to work with it. So once it starts to get leather hard, it has more strength, it can stand up on its own. Um, you can still add clay to it, uh, but if you bend it too hard, it is going to crack and come apart on you. Okay? The next stage is considered bone dry. That's when you set it out uh, several hours a day and all the moisture evaporates out of it. Um, and you can no longer bend it. It's going to be quite stiff, quite rigid, and very fragile. Okay? It's going to break very easily. So when it's in that bone dry stage, you have to be very careful. Uh, grabbing it the wrong way, dropping it, something like that, is going to shatter all of your hard work. Okay? So once it gets to bone dry, that's when you have to be the most careful. Once it's bone dry, once all the water's evaporated out, it's been given a couple of days to dry, uh, then we're going to fire it in something called a kiln. Uh, which I'll get to in a minute here. A kiln is like a big oven. There are coils on the inside of it. It heats up. Um, and I'll talk about the temperatures in a minute. It's fired the first time and it becomes the next stage that you see on that tray there. Uh, the stuff that's kind of that, that orangish brown. It's very solid. It's called bisque. Bisque wears clay that's been fired once. It's been vitrified. Very durable at that point. It can still be broken if you drop it on something harder than itself. Um, if you throw it, something like that can definitely shatter it. But it's very strong. Now you can manip you can uh, pretty much carry it around, not worry about breaking it whatsoever. The one final stage is the color that you get to a work of clay. How do we add color to clay? Any idea? Glaze. Glaze. Yes. Glaze is the main way. There are other ways. You can paint clay projects. You can stain them. Uh, so you can use a variety of different uh, paints materials, but glaze is the most durable. Glaze um, is very similar to clay. It has some of those, those same key ingredients. That's silica, which when heated gives you the glass finish to your clay. You'll see some uh, glaze tiles on that tray as well. That gives it its shine, its permanence, uh, that high gloss finish. It's also going to have different metal oxides in there. 
That just lowers the temperature so that, that silica melts and turns to glass at a lower temperature because it takes a very extreme temperature to do that. Uh, we're going to have alumina in there again. And that just keeps the color from running right off the sides of the clay piece. And then there's different chemicals that add the color. Uh, different oxides, things like cobalt, uh, when heated, give you different colors to your, to your glazes. And as you can see here, glaze comes in pretty much any color you can imagine. So when you're planning your work, be thinking about colors as well. Make sure I have the colors that you want. This is the kiln. It's in the back room. Once I have enough clay projects that are bone dry, I'll load that kiln up as full as I can get it. Uh, it takes about 12 hours or so to, to do a firing. The first firing, where it turns into that bisque that you see on the tray there, uh, it goes up to about 1,800 degrees. Okay? Once we apply the glaze and fire it a second time, it goes up to 2,200 degrees. So how hot is that? Hot enough to bake cookies? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that'd be delicious. Really hot. In three seconds. Let's put it uh, into perspective here. What's the hottest planet the in our solar system? Any idea? The sun, the sun, that planet. It's the hottest, hottest planet. Any idea? Very genius. I don't know. Venus. I said Venus. You said Venus, you got it right. Yeah. Okay. Call BS. Venus is our hottest planet. Said Mercury. The said maximum Mercury. temperature on the surface of Venus is 900 degrees. Oh, we should go. So okay. we're talking a temperature that's twice as hot as the hottest planet in our solar system. Is what we're firing in that back room. Okay. Uh, so to give you an idea of what that has to go through to give it the permanence. So what you're telling me is I shouldn't touch it? Don't. Yeah, you don't want to stick your fingers in there. Okay. Keep it wrapped you up. Would lose your fingers. So we have some rules for you guys to be successful when you're working with clay. You got to do a couple of important things, or else things can go wrong, and things won't work out for you. The first thing is, is if, if you're not working on your project and you want to continue working on it, you got to wrap it up. Because air is the enemy. Air takes all the moisture out of clay. Once it dries out, you can't add more clay to it. It becomes very delicate and fragile. You break easily, you're done. Okay, so if you're not done with the project in any given day, you're going to wrap it up tight in plastic. We're going to store it, and you can come back and unwrap it, and it'll still be that greenware, that soft stage that you need to continue working on it. The next thing is, is that clay, uh, the dust from clay can be harmful. It's like breathing in any other uh, foreign objects or foreign particles. So in order to avoid that, we just got to keep the area clean. When you guys are working on clay, you're either working in the back of the room or you're working on a tray at your desk. If there's clay on the desk, on the table, it all has to be cleaned up uh, quickly. Soap, water, sponge, uh, pretty easy to clean up. But once it starts to get dust all over this place, we're breathing that stuff in and it's not good for you. We want to make sure we clean it up after ourselves. A very important rule with clay is that you can't make something that's super thick. If you do, it traps moisture on the inside, and that moisture can never fully escape the clay. If we have moisture in our clay and we heat it up in a kiln, the moisture in the center of that clay tries to turn to steam, and it causes the clay to... Blow up. Explode. Right. What if you put holes so, in So, a good rule so that you make sure yeah. you don't have clay that's too thick is never to make anything thicker than your thumb. Alright? No matter how big the thing is you want to make, there are ways to make it hollow and uh, keep the clay thickness down to the thickness of your thumb. If you do that, you're going to be in good shape and we don't have your piece exploding and taking out other pieces in the kiln as well. Um, in order for clay to stick together, and I'll show you this as you guys are starting to work on things, you can't just take two pieces of clay and stick them together. They stick when it's greenware because there's moisture holding it together. But as soon as those two pieces start to dry, they're just going to come right apart. There's no bond there. So in order to stick two pieces of clay together, we either have to blend them together so that they merge and become one, or there's a, a technique called scoring and slipping where we're going to rough up the surfaces, add a mixture of clay and water as a glue, and press them together, and that slip and, and scoring technique will bond the pieces together as well. So I'll explain that more when we get to your projects. Next thing we're looking at is, uh, this is just a precautionary measure. The only thing that can uh, ruin your project is if you trap air in your clay. So when we, before we even start working with our clay, we're going to wedge it, push out any air, and align clay particles so it becomes more consistent. This is especially important if you're using the pottery wheel. Uh, this is what I was talking about. You trap air, you trap moisture inside the clay. When that stuff heats up, it has nowhere to go. That happens. Okay. <laughs> 
Once we get into adding glaze to our pieces, you can glaze everything except for the bottom of your pieces. If you put glaze on the bottom of your piece, and I set that in the kiln, that glaze is going to heat up, turn to glass, and stick permanently inside of the kiln. And the only way to get it out is with a hammer, and it's not going to come out in one piece. All right? So no glaze on the bottom. So it's very important. And I'll stress that when we get to glazing. A couple more things. Uh, be careful when you're handling your, your work. Uh, like I said, especially when it becomes bone dry, if you pick it up the wrong way, it's going to crack, fall, shatter on the floor, and all your hard work's gone. The other thing that goes along with that is don't touch other people's projects. If something's on the shelf drying, whatever, just don't touch it. That way you don't have to worry about breaking in, feeling bad, and ruining their hard work. So don't touch other projects. Uh, when it comes to working clay, I mentioned this already, we're either working in the back of the room on those old tables, or we're working on a tray on these tables, and it's vitally important that we clean up our mess, the clay dust gets everywhere, and it starts looking like this. This is the other thing about the dust. All your smoothing, all your details should be done when the clay is still soft and moist. A lot of people like to make something and say, I'll just sand it. What happens when you start grinding or sanding a dry piece of clay? creates dust, right? And it also risks cracking or fracturing the clay. So all the smoothing, everything that you do to that piece should be done while it's still soft. Once it's been fired, it becomes bisque. There's no smoothing, there's no manipulating whatsoever. So do it all while it's still soft. This is a very important thing. You guys have to plan first. Um, I know a lot of people like to say, yeah, just give me the clay and I'll play around see what happens. Uh, two things will happen. One, you won't know what you're doing. You gotta step back, plan it out, think about it, discuss it with me first, so I can show you the proper way, the best way to do it. Um, and then the other thing that will happen is you just play around with the clay to the point where it dries out, and then it's no good. All right. And with that, which case I have to repurpose that clay. Um, this is important. Nothing inappropriate. I've had plenty of people in the past try to make bowls or pipes, um, and what happens to them? Spend it. They get suspended. So don't even try. That. Well, the real part. Yeah, as sneaky as you think you may be, I don't know what it is. Also, no ashtrays, guys. I'm not going to encourage smoking. You can buy one at the dollar store. Um, and then this is important, too. Don't throw clay away, and don't put it in the sink. Clogs the sink. We don't throw clay away because we can reuse it. I can break it down once it dries out, add water back to it, reclaim it, reuse it, recycle it. So don't throw it away. Don't throw it down the sink. Uh, clay doesn't have wings, so don't throw it. If you throw clay, you kill it for the class. No more clay. A couple more here, guys. Uh, anyone who wants to use the pottery wheel, I encourage it. It'll be open all year long. You can try it as much as you want. Um, you need patience, you need endurance, and you need to listen to the technique and learn the technique before you expect to make anything. It can be fun, but you have to learn how to do it properly. If you do want to use the pottery wheels, the, the downside of that is that you have to help me clean them up once in a while because it gets a little messy. It shouldn't be that messy.